Hey guys, what's up? Um, King of K-pop here. It's been a minute. Um, just been really, really busy with a lot of things that have been going on. Uh, a lot of changes um, in my life. Um, so I've been really busy. Anyway, um, a lot of stuff has been happening um, in K-pop. Uh, you know, at least since in, in my absence of doing videos. And, you know, I've been meaning to talk about these specific things that have been going on. But I decided just to get it all done in just this one simple video it's kind of hit on everything and that is basically um, my thoughts of uh, 2014 uh, is it the worst year um, in k-pop I think so I think so I think this year has not really been a good year there have been a few bright spots but if you compare the negatives to the positives I think we've had more negative things and outcomes so far um, in 2014 and it's not even over yet um, we have two more months of 2014 until, until the new year. Um, but if you compare the two, um, we have, we've had more negative things to come out from K-pop than we have positive. I mean, I could just go down the list. I mean, from the beginning of the year of, um, some members revealing that they, from groups that they're in relationships, uh, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Uh, I think Taeyeon, Taeyeon's re uh, relationship with, uh, Baekhyung from XO being revealed. I think that was not, I don't think that was really well received. Not because of Taeyong and Baekhyung being um, in, in, in a relationship, but the fact that from the fans' perspective, at least the Korean fans, they felt like those two were kind of rubbing in the fans' faces via Instagram and kind of making little love messages to each other via Instagram. When the fans were like, you know, you guys make these Instagram um, uh, profiles for us, for the fans, to keep in contact with us fans. But you guys are kind of like Googling eyeing each other and sending each other, you know, little love messages via your Instagram accounts and kind of making fun that we don't know that you guys are in a relationship. Kind of like thing. So from the Koreans fans' perspective, it wasn't a good thing. Um, Taeyeon's relationship, kind of, that was, it was a little bad. Uh, got a little bad reception just based off that. Um, Chris leaving XO, um, you know, you could say one of the hottest boy bands to hit SM, I would say, since Dumbong Shigi. Um, the band is not even three years old yet, and already, uh, Chris leaves, uh, XO for his reasons. Then we had Luhan, uh, just recently, uh, last month, uh, nullifying his contract, um, which I'm starting to see a little pattern. I think it's very interesting that both Chris and, and, and Luhan, even though they have their reasons as to why they want to leave uh, XO, I, I do find it interesting um, the timing that they do it, and A, that they're both Chinese, and they get the same lawyers for some reason. I, and there's it's nothing against the Chinese, but when you have two Chinese members that leave and want their contracts nullified from XO, plus you have the Chinese member from Super Junior, it may put a bad bit of taste in SM's mouth to where they might not want to, you know, have Chinese auditions or accept Chinese trainees into their company because they probably feel like if we invest in you guys, you're going to leave like all the other, uh, you know, Chinese stars, Chinese turned K-pop stars we've had in the past. So by them kind of doing stuff like that, it kind of puts a bad rep for other Chinese uh, inspired artists that want to get into K-pop. That might not do that. That might not want to, you know, break away from the company or anything like that once the company is invested in them. So, uh, hindsight is a little tricky. Um, from that to, um, let's see, was it Jessica? Jessica's situation with, with uh, Girls' Generation, that was bad. Um, Kara, uh, earlier this year, uh, both uh, uh, Nicole and I forget the other member, their contracts expired. Didn't want to be part of the group anymore. And even though Kara... Uh, they did well with Mamma Mia promotion, and the new member seems like she's doing all right. You just still get this feeling like it's a sinking ship. You know, it's like, hey, you have this really expensive yacht, and it's sinking. It's still afloat, but it's got some cracks underneath the bottom of the of the boat, and you're just trying to seal in the cracks with duct tape, but yet water is still seeping through because it's only a matter of time until the darn Titanic just sinks completely. That's how I feel with Kara. Even though they did a good job with Mamma Mia, still. Now we have XO, I'm sorry, not XO, In Black, excuse me, Lee Jun, uh, coming off from uh, In Black saying 
he doesn't want to resign uh, with the company anymore. And then just a few days after, Thunder also uh, admitted he did, he doesn't want to resign with J2 Camp. Now, this really doesn't kind of come as a surprise to me, especially from Lee June's case, because wasn't about a year ago, Lee June uh, made uh, a Twitter remark or something of how like he felt like he was a soulless, lifeless robot or something like that. And um, he uh, he wasn't going to take it anymore or something like that. But then he quickly deleted that message and people were kind of concerned, like, was this from Lee June or was this from somebody else who was posing as Lee June? Come to find out it was actually Lee June's words because he was, like, stressed or something like that. So this actually doesn't come as a surprise to me. And then on the other hand, let's be honest, I loved M. Black. I loved M. Black when they first debuted. I first found out that Rain, who was a guy I grew up listening to and loved music as well, was making a boy band. Um... I was excited for M Black, but you look at M Black's track record, their career, M Black are not the biggest boy band that you would have thought they would have been, turn out to be, considering how long they've been out and how many albums that they've had up until this uh, up until this, this day. So it's probably a thing of like, hey, we're not being marketed um, as much as we would like to. We're probably not as famous as we should be. Um, we're not making as much money as we need, as, as, as we want to. That's how I kind of look at M Black situation. So I kind of understand because M Black, they're a successful group, but again, like I said, they're not where you would think they would be. Whereas you say like a Beast, Beast came out the exact same time as M Black. I think, t if I remember correctly, Beast and M Black both came out or debuted two weeks from each other or a week from each other. They debuted um, and. Beast has surpassed um, M. Black with flying colors. You could easily see that. And both both groups admitted that. Both M. Black and Beast admitted that um, Beast, in the beginning, it was M. Black, then Beast. But now, Beast has surpassed M. Black. Um, so there's that. And then, obviously, the, the worst thing to have ever happened this year, unfortunately, and I think it will forever be remembered in K-pop, um, was the tragic, tragic death of um, Ladies Code. A very, very, very sad and sudden um, thing. Just, I mean, shocked the world. Uh, I did hear something about the families. I think it's to sue uh, the the driver who's still alive, who's the like the manager in charge of taking it from place to place. Uh, they're looking to come together and suing him, um, which I think they they should. If he's responsible for that, he should be sued. Uh, that was a terrible, terrible accident. I think that that was the that was the worst thing to happen this year amongst other things. So uh, um, amongst all the things that have happened in 2014, here's how I look at it this year for K-pop um, as we're kind of coming close to a close. But um, A, from a fan's perspective, it looks bad. You know, it seems like this is a bad year because, you know, it's like, you know, these are groups that you grew up watching, grew up with and listening to their music, been fans since day one. And to see groups disband or members leave, it's it's a bit you know, hurting from a fan's perspective because it's like, oh, you guys are never going to be the same or we're going to miss you. Um, but on the other end, I kind of look at it this way. I look at it like, you know, this is another sign. I made a video uh, earlier this year of the new generation of K-pop stars coming in. I think this is just one of those things. It's just one of those times where the second generation K-pop stars are starting to reach their peak. They're starting to fizz a little bit. They're starting to phase out. And the new generation are... Go, are starting are going to take over um with the exception of xo because xo is part of that third generation but um you know th so that's one thing and then other thing too uh i kind of don't feel too bad to a certain degree that some of these members are leaving these groups and, and whatnot these respective groups and conference and whatnot because i think the second generation k-pop stars they're kind of taking a stand for themselves you know whereas the perspective in K-pop, or at least in the K-pop industry, has always been where, you know, here's the company, you guys are our little puppets, you do whatever we tell you to, you say whatever we want you to say. And it kind of seems like uh, some of these artists now, they're kind of getting to the point of looking at things a little bit differently and kind of taking a stand up for themselves and saying, hold up, wait a minute, you know what? I'm not going to be your soulless, lifeless little puppet anymore that you just feel with whatever crap you want to feel with and you just make money i mean like hey i get that you want to make money off of me but in the same token too don't take advantage of me because at the end of the day i am a person and you need me just as much as i need you just as much as i need you to make me to become a star you need me to put revenue 
and in your fat pocketbook. So I think a lot of these K-pop stars are starting to look at things differently now. And they're starting to speak up and kind of become more outspoken, you know, from Jessica. Her statement, things that she said with the whole Sunishi Day thing, what's going on with M Black, the stuff that happened with Chris earlier. And um, I think a lot, a lot of these K-pop stars are looking at things differently and they're starting to speak up a little bit more. Um, and I admire that. I do. I, I think it's. I think it's time these pe they stand up for themselves because at the end of the day, these companies don't give a darn um, half the time about. I'm not saying all K-pop companies, but I feel like some of these K-pop companies don't give a darn about these 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 people. They just. Feel, I think they feel like, hey, they're just warm bodies to feel and make a profit off of. Um, if we can't make a profit off of you, if you don't do whatever, we'll just make another. You know, cut cut and, cut and copy and paste a clone. Uh, so to speak, of another group or whatever. So uh, that's another way I look at it. So at the end of the day, 2014 has been a bad year for K-pop, and I think it will forever stick out as one of those bad years, probably one of the worst as well, uh, just for those reasons that I've mentioned here in this video. You guys let me know what you think. What is your thoughts so far? Even though 2014 is not over yet, we only have two more months, but it's still pretty much coming to a close anyway. What are you guys' thoughts on 2014 as it revolves around the year of K-pop? Comment, subscribe, peace.